common question I get asked a lot is, what is the difference between one brush and another? There's so much choice out there. Let's simplify this for you. First of all, there's different qualities of brush. We have here, at the top end, something called a Kalinsky Sable. This is 100% natural hair. The hair is special, hollow, designed to hold lots of water. Here we've got a imitation sable brush, which is designed as close as we can get it to replicate this hair. Of course, that is reflected in the price. Then we come over here to the gold brush. Now this one is a mixture of a sable, a natural hair, and a synthetic hair. This is my personal choice. We then have something in the middle here, which is all synthetic. These are a nylon brush, which are super economical, but the great thing about these is they hold the point for a long time. Let's move the brushes to one side and let's talk you through the different shapes, sizes and styles of brush. First of all, a, a large brush here. This one is called a big wash brush. Now this one is around about size 20. This is my, my favourite brush of painting, big skies, that kind of thing. And if I just pop a bit of water up here, a very simple way that you would paint a sky is take some blue paint wet the paper first, as you saw me do, and we can use that brush flat to the paper or use the super fine point on it. And you can see how wide versus how fine you can go with a brush, a very versatile brush. Clean that brush really well. And then here, we've got something called a overwash brush. Again, a synthetic hair. Because it's more of a flat brush, it's really useful for painting skies, but also for taking paint out as well. So if we was to put some blue, load the brush up with colour, always put the water on first, and stroke the brush across the paper here, you can see it covers an area very quickly. Now if I clean that brush and squeeze it through my fingers, you can lay the brush flat on the side, and can you see that it takes away. Now if you give that a bit of a wiggle, instant clouds, beautiful effect while the paint is still wet. And of course, this brush goes from thick down to thin again, great for painting skies. Let's work down the sizes a little bit. Here we've got a gold brush. This one is a size 10. Now, the gold brush is a mixture of natural hair and synthetic hair, great brushes. And a size 10 brush will go any kind of medium area, so like painting a grassy banking, but you can see just how you can really go to a beautiful point because of the nature of the sable and the synthetic mix together really gives that beautiful effect. So we've gone from a 20 brush, a large brush, into the flat oval shaped brush into the 10. Let's go down and work something smaller. Here we've got a size 8 brush, the imitation sable. Again, a round brush like this is great. And this is my kind of go-to brush, either a size 8 or a size 6, because I can hold this brush like a pen and I can get a big wash or a fine line. And look at the beautiful point on that brush. You can use this brush like a, a pen for getting beautiful branches, detail, painting a silhouette of a figure walking a dog on a beach. You can see it's such a versatile brush, a size eight or a size six. A flat brush is also a very common brush. And what a flat brush is good for, of course, is for painting straight lines. This one here is a 12 millimeter, it's called the Flatmate, and it's very easy for painting ripples in water, reflections, but also for filling in large areas using the front and back of the brush. A flat brush is also really effective for removing paint once the paint is dry. If I clean the brush, give it a pinch through my fingers so it's just damp, come back to the dry paint here, very easy to wash off and then give it a press with tissue. So lifting out is a great technique. And then something that's related to a square brush or a flat brush is a brush called a rake, 13 mil rake. Look at the bristle, you can see it's got those nice individual hairs. The brush is tapered from a short hair to a tall hair, and a rake is good for painting lots of fine lines. Great for texture. So as we can see here, imagine water, imagine grasses, imagine wood grain, beautiful 
almost a special effect brush. And the final brush I'd like to mention is something called a rigger brush. Now a rigger brush is a long pointy bristle. It was originally designed by the Victorians for painting rigging on boats, hence the name rigger. But it's probably the most used brush for detail. Um, and again, like holding a pen in your hand, you can basically use this for doing the super fine work, for really getting in that gorgeous detail. It's even good for signing your picture.